Imagine if you will, you are in one of the most holiest places on earth, the enlightened city, Medina. You sit in the Prophet's mosque, the whispers of the worshippers recitation of the Quran sing down the halls of the great masjid. The Prophet and his loyal companions rest in their tombs greeted by millions of their followers. You are in total peace and serenity. Suddenly an announcement is made that an army surrounds the holy city and they are here to take it away from you. You are outnumbered, cut off from any support. How scared would you be? Not for yourself, but for the Prophet and his beloved city. What would you do? Would you run or would you fight? This is exactly the situation one Ottoman commander faced in 1918 in the final chapters of the First World War. He would stay and defend Medina even after his superiors told him to abandon the city. So who was his commander? And why was he so ready to sacrifice himself and his men for the holy city? Let's find out. Fakhruddin Pasha, or Amar Fakhruddin Turkan, was born in Rus in 1868. He and his family had moved to Constantinople in 1878 after the devastation of the Russo-Turkish War. By the time the First World War machine was in full rage, Fakhruddin had taken part in battles across Libya, the Balkans, and he was even the commander of a division stationed in Gallipoli. But these battles and campaigns weren't the only reasons why Fakhruddin achieved legendary status. You see, after the Young Turk Revolution, the rise of Turkish nationalism had further alienated the Arabs ruled in those Ottoman provinces. This revolution was marked by extraordinary social and political transformations, which greatly affected the Arabs. The Arabs were clearly not happy with these changes, and so they staged a revolt. The Arabs and their leader Sharif Hussein bin Ali were moving towards Medina. So the Ottomans needed someone they could trust to do their job and defend Medina. So in 1916, Fakhruddin Pasha was deployed to Medina as its defender and governor. From when Fakhruddin arrived in Medina in May, it was a cat and mouse game between him and the British-backed rebellious Arabs. The first thing that the Pasha had done upon arrival was to make sure that the sacred relics and manuscripts in the city were sent safely to Istanbul so that no one would seize them in fear of destruction. About 500 manuscripts are currently kept in Medina library of Topkapi Palace in Turkey. Fakhruddin had taken offensive measures within the city, but Sharif Hussain was quick to destroy railway and telegraph lines around the holy city in June. However, when the Arabs attacked the outposts of Medina, they were unsuccessful and repelled back. Unlike the unpopular governor of Hejaz, Ghalib Pasha, who had lost the city due to the insurgency of the local Arabs, Fakhruddin was popular amongst the locals of Medina. He had developed a close relationship with the Arabs in the region and even took them into his service. But the odds were still greatly against the commander, as the rebels had already seized cities outside Medina with rapid speed. Nonetheless, he remained loyal to the cause of defending the Prophet's city, despite being surrounded. He never gave up. Fakhruddin and his troops were cornered and cut off. He now has no access to aid, food and military supplies. Also, given the fact that the fortress that he's protecting is stranded in the middle of the desert, this does not make his situation any better. He and his troops suffered from hunger, thirst and deadly diseases. All these led to a call for desperate measures and oh how desperate they were. So the Pasha issued a command on June 7th, 1918 about eating grasshoppers. Yes, you heard that correctly. He told his men to eat grasshoppers. Famously, he said, what is different from a sparrow in a grasshopper? There are no feathers of it, but it has wings like a sparrow and flies like it. Feeds on plants, eats clean and fresh things, and it enjoys both tobacco and lemon. The main food of Bedouins is the grasshopper, and they owe their health and fitness to the grasshoppers they eat. Reportedly, he had doctors analyze the grasshoppers and even recommended four different ways of preparing the less than appealing grasshoppers. While Fakhruddin was enjoying his grasshopper meals, the Ottoman Empire had accepted defeat and surrendered its provinces on October 30, 1918, including Medina. Fakhruddin was ordered to deliver Medina and surrender. The commander did the unthinkable when he refused to surrender the holy city and instead chose to defend it. So for the next 72 days after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire, Fakhruddin Pasha was fighting his own battle for Medina, the city of the Prophet. The siege took a toll on both sides. Fakhruddin needed all the help he could get. He would be seen praying constantly and besieging Allah. In a Friday sermon after the prayers in the Prophet's mosque, Fakhruddin addressed his troops. 
Soldiers, I appeal to you in the name of the Prophet, my witness. I command you to defend him and his city to the last cartridge and the last breath, irrespective of the strength of the enemy. May Allah help us and may the prayers of Muhammad be with us. He then looked at the tomb of the Prophet and said, O oh Allah's Prophet, I will never leave you. Unfortunately, Fakhruddin Pasha would see his darkest days when his superiors would send his replacement, Ali Najab, to negotiate surrender to the British and the Arabs. They were adamant on the Pasha surrendering the city. So Ali agreed to hand over Fakhruddin. Ali went to Fakhruddin to see how he was doing not knowing that Ali had organized a capture of the commander. Fakhruddin had described this as his most painful day when they seized, tied and delivered him to the British. On January 27th, 1919, he was then taken to Egypt as a prisoner of war and then exiled on August 5th to Malta and held captive for two years. He was freed on April 8th, 1921 and would later pass away on November 22nd, 1948. Fakhruddin proved to the world his unwavering love for the Messenger and the Deen of Islam, despite his superiors or enemies. He defended the Prophet's city and mosque, even after he was told not to do so by his own Sultan because he loved the Prophet and feared his beloved would land in the hands of the enemy. During the siege in 1918, he received a call to surrender from Sharif Hussein of Mecca. Fakhruddin's reply was that proof to the world. He said, In the name of Allah, the Omnipotent, to him who broke the power of Islam, caused bloodshed among Muslims, jeopardized the caliphate of the commander of the faithful, and exposed it to the domination of the British. On Thursday night, the 14th of Dhul Hijjah, I was walking tired and worn out, thinking of the protection and defense of Medina. When I found myself among unknown men working in a small square, then I saw standing before me a man with a sublime countenance. He was the prophet, May Allah's blessings be upon him. His left arm rested on his hip under his robe, and he said to me in a protective manner, Follow me. I followed him two or three paces and woke up. I immediately proceeded to his sacred mosque and prostrated myself in prayer and thanks. I am now under the protection of the Prophet, my supreme commander. I am busying myself with strengthening the defenses, building roads and squares in Medina. Trouble me not with your useless offers. May Allah reward Fakhruddin Pasha for his unwavering support for the Prophet and the religion of Islam. Amin. If you enjoyed this video along with all the other content that One Path Network produces, please support us so we can create more beneficial content for the world. Go to onepathnetwork.com and you can support us from as little as $1 a day. Jazakumullah khair for your support. <laughs>